my name is Laura Jarvis and we are going to do a cute little video uh, for the butterfly landing and for rainbow gardens and this is the new habitat here at the butterfly landing and uh, we're going to give you a little bit of information about all these beautiful flowers that we've worked hard to plant and uh, give you a quick little tour of everything. Are we all ready? Okay, come on with me. We're going to show you some plants and some information. So the first thing we've got up here in the front is frog fruit. And it is a host plant for fan uh, crescents. And um, then we've got some native verbenas. And they are just a nectar plant. But that's okay. Nectar's good. Everybody needs nectar. We've got some... Uh, Mexican primrose here, it's an Onothera, and that is a host plant for the white lined uh, sphinx moth, which is our fun hummingbird moth. Here we have Wee Satch Daisy, which is a, a native wild flower, and it's kind of a tender perennial, it reseeds itself, blooms most of the summer though. And this is an American basket flower, so this isn't an annual. Um, gets nice and tall. We'll see how much pollinator action we get. Um, and then we've got some antelope horns that are doing pretty well. And the Blackfoot Daisy. And Blackfoot Daisy is not the best as far as nectar goes, but when you're do doing something small, it's a great foreground. So we'll get a little bit of action, but not a whole lot. So the milkweeds, you're going to get a lot of uh, pollinators as well as a host. Here's a really nice looking Texas uh, milkweed or, or uh, Texana, a lot of times we call it. Then next to it, we've got a native lantana, which is really bright and happy right in front of some uh, beautiful salvias. and. Um, this is a, a little bit more of a hybridized salvia, but I picked it because it attracts more bees and butterflies than a lot of the other uh, salvias do. So um, regardless whether it was a true native or not, it was well worth planting for the wildlife. Then we're gonna get over here. We've got a showy milkweed coming up really, really nice, doing a doing a good job of filling out and getting tall. We'll see if we get blooms. Alrighty, right after the showy milkweed, we have another Texas milkweed or Texana. And this beauty is starting to bloom already. So we'll start getting some uh, nectaring pollinators on that. Um, you all may or may not know this plant is called clammy weed. And it's kind of like a wild Cleome, native to our hill country. It's kind of interesting, a host plant for checkered, uh, let's see, white checkers. And um, we'll see. I haven't ever seen any caterpillars on them yet. We're, some of this is experimentation. We've got Texas sage that are babies. They haven't grown enough yet, but uh, we've already had caterpillars on one of them. Um, so we've got a... A checkered crescent that is uh, in the process. Got them little caterpillars. We're gonna take a moment and uh, step through this stuff and then we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna talk about some of these. So now we've got some native wildflowers, uh, Coreopsis. Uh, we've got some black-eyed Susans. We've got a little bit of uh, Gypsophilia. And um, then uh, we've got uh, little red salvia, tropical salvia or colcinia getting ready to bloom there, and some cornflower. And then we've got this beautiful baby, which has been blooming since February. So cool, globe mallows. And probably by the heat of the summer, they'll be a little spent and maybe a little bare. We'll probably cut them back and see how well they leaf and bloom back out for us. We've got this beautiful plant right here, which is the Indian mallow or Texas mallow, and it's going to have yellow blooms on it. 
and uh, it, it just gets so beautiful. And then over here, we've got Snapdragon Vine, which is a host for Buckeye. It's a beautiful little vine, and uh, it, it will reseed freely, which would be kind of nice. We're going to find out where it decides it's going to come up. And then one of my favorites coming up right here, they froze back really hard over the winter, so they're small. But this is the Lindheimer Senna, and several of the sulfurs host on it, but the um, Sleepy Orange absolutely adores that plant. So it's one of my favorites. So Lemon Mint, which is uh, a Monarda that's a bee balm. And believe it or not, we've only gotten a few uh, bees on it as far as the activity goes. Um, we have a couple of native bees that have been frequenting it, and uh, that's kind of cool. So something for a specific bee, and um, we're, we're going to watch it over the months and see which bees like what plants. More Weesatch Daisy. We've got more of the Coreopsis. A wild petunia got in some of the seed. <laughs> We've got more uh, Texana milkweed. And um, then this one over here has been getting all kinds of attention. This is an Augustaki, not a true Nex Texas native, but it is a North American native. And um, so with that being said, it has probably had more butterfly and bee activity than any of these other plants out here so far this spring, except for the caterpillars that we had on the milkweeds, um, which has been really fun. We've had a couple of batches of monarchs already this spring. And um, then coming around here, uh, walkways in progress and um, this uh, will have fireworks gumfrina, which is not a native either, but I get lots of activity and it'll be color for hot, sunny, dry, and it will bloom all summer long. And um, this is a relentless plant. How about that, y'all? That's a, that's a new description for plant material. It's relentless. So, more Augustaki. Then y'all come on over this direction. So, okay, over here we have Zexmenia, which is a perennial, and it will spread. So it can spread by seed or the plant itself will spread out. And um, it's a little nectar plant, uh, just a, a little information. The bordered patch butterfly loves the nectar on this little plant. Then we have a bunch of uh, Zizotes milkweeds and they are um, they have a, a few ladybugs on them which are taking care of our aphids for us which is really nice um, I think they need to hurry up um, and then we have more Coreopsis and kind of a few more of the same things we've got more blackfoot daisy and then we have a, a wild sunflower that are birds planted. We've had several of those. I have to just take them out of places where they're not gonna go. And if they get too tall, we'll take them out. But hopefully in the meantime, we will have some caterpillars and extra butterflies on them. So that's pretty much what we've got going on over here. I may have forgotten a few things. Um, I did, I forgot black dahlia, which I love, 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 love. And the reason why I love it so much is because the Southern Dog Face hosts on it. And it's also a host for a lot of our little mini blues, which uh, be like the Ray Kurtz blue, uh, the Serranus blue, um, and uh, there's about two or three other types like a tailed blue. And uh, then we've got a desert verbena, which is a trial for us. We see it a little more in the drier areas of Texas, a little north and a little towards El Paso, but uh, some of these plants are little test plants 
And uh, so that is one of them. We're going to see how it does. We've got uh, a, a few of the partridge pea coming up that I seeded into this area. And uh, they just kind of came up where they wanted to. And uh, they'll be blooming beautiful. It's a host plant as well. So that was really a quick glimpse. I didn't even tell you about the Greg's Blue Mist that's over here and uh, our Betany Mist flower. There, there's more. And then we're, this is pretty much in progress. But I did want to mention we are a way station, a certified way station for the monarchs. And we are also registered on the Million Pollinator Network. So we have a, a little pin on, on the map for the butterfly landing. So if you go to the Million Pollinator Network and you want to see us, we have a little pin where the butterfly landing is um, because we have that certification as well. So if you all need more information about any certification or any of these plants, I encourage you to reach out and uh, check out my Facebook, The Butterfly Landing, and I'll have more information about all of these plants and give you a little a uh, rundown of some of the stuff that we're going to add to this garden and it's going to change a little bit throughout the summers it's going to look a lot different uh, spring bloom summer bloom fall bloom so we're going to have a lot of changes to come up and uh, maybe we can get to you all out here again for another tour uh, give us some feedback and tell us what you think i got a thumbs up on that one <laughs>